This particular morning we took off on a run. What was happening in reality right in front of me was really a complete metaphor for what goes on for me as far as what I wanted to do in MMA and where I was at because I could see about 20, 25 feet in front of me but I couldn't see any farther. Every time I took a step it opened up another step that I could see off into the future and that's, that's really what it's all about. You don't know what the end result is unless you keep going and push and push and push. So many people assume that, you know, it's just an overnight success. You just wake up one morning and you want to fight, so you do. But it's so far from the truth. Before I even took my first fight, wasn't even allowed to take a striking class or, or hit mitts until I'd put a solid year in, in the gi and jiu-jitsu. Took on uh, three jiu-jitsu tournaments in that year and I uh, took gold medals away from all three of them. I wanted to fight more than I wanted anything else. And I was lucky enough to end up at a gym with one of the greatest striking coaches in Mike Gonzalez that I've ever seen. It was, no, this is how you throw a jab. Now let's throw a thousand of them. The guys that I spar with day in and day out at 303 are 10, 20 times better than the, any guy I step in the cage with at, at the level that I fight at. My camps and my sparring sessions are really the fight for me. Getting to go in the cage, you know, in front of the crowd, that's, that's fun. You want to be a pro. You want to be the best you can be. And the way to be the best pro you can be is to be an amateur training at a professional level, assuming that you're a professional. Because if you're an amateur and you train with the pros and you work with the pros and you do what pros do, you're gonna have pro results. When Steve Alley said, yeah, we'd love to have you on Kickdown, I started off with that first fight in January. And my whole intention was that I wasn't gonna just fight on Kickdown once and prove the point that a 42-year-old guy can get in the cage. I decided that day that I was gonna win a belt. I was gonna be a champion in that promotion. I was gonna create an entire chapter of my life based on being a, a rookie, first-time fighter in a promotion all the way up to taking home one of their belts. And that was the goal. I accepted my third fight. Some social media stuff had happened after the second fight. There was some discussion that maybe that fight got stopped a little early. And I was like, all right, well, I'm fighting the same guy again. There's gonna be no question. I think it was 58 seconds, finished him. He tapped right as it was over. Steve walks in the cage and I said, hey man, I want that championship. He's like, you're 3-0 in my promotion. If you want to fight in July, you get a championship shot. And I was like, oh, man, I can't believe it. That's exactly what I've been wanting. I usually fight at 155 as a lightweight. He said, but this, I got you a title fight. It's at 148. I said, I'll take it. So he brought over some film of the guy. Mike watched about 15 seconds and said, we'll take it. So we took the fight and I started down the road to this fight camp knowing that my nutrition had to be on point, my training had to be more hours per day, higher caliber workouts than any of my other camps. I walk around at like 175. So I had to get down to 148, so I, I said I better start now. And it made for a really, really tough weight cut, but I found where I need to be as a fighter. And that's in that super junior lightweight or featherweight area. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cheers, the official facility for the weigh-ins of Kickdown Mixed Martial Arts. Tomorrow evening, in the main event, Trevor O'Connor, representing Colorado for the first ever Super Junior Lightweight Men's Mixed Martial Arts title. Gentlemen, come on up. No one understands the day of weigh-ins. Cutting weight to make a fight is the thing that will, that will make you quit. That's what changes people. It breaks people. It makes champions at the same time, but oh man, it's absolutely the worst thing in the entire world. You have a hard time standing up and just walking to the stage to weigh in. There's nothing. You step on the scale and you made weight, your opponent steps on the scale and you knuckle up. 
my body gets there, you know, it sucks. It sucks for that 72 hours of that weight cut. But man, I feel strong and I feel big when I get in the cage with those guys. When I'm, you know, after I'm rehydrated and I'm 165, and when we walk in the cage, and man, there's no stopping me at that weight. As soon as my walkout song hits, the switch just turns. Ugh, I bite down on my mouthpiece and I stomp my ass to the ring. <laughs> Do it through, you know, where, where the section of my fans are. Because I feel the crowd noise, but I can't see anything. Like, I don't see a single face. I just hear, the, and I feel it. Get up there and the referee checks you out, you get the Vaseline on. As soon as I walk up those cage steps, there's hatred, there's anger. You know, there's someone in that cage that when they close the door, wants to hurt me. And the last thing that's going to be allowed in this world is someone is going to hurt me or take away from what I'm doing. It's not going to happen, man. I am going to impose my will. I'm going to change your day. I always make sure that I cover more than half the cage for our initial contact. He came out and he wanted to throw this big barrage of punches. The guys I, I spar with hit so hard and I was like, wait a minute. I don't feel anything. This guy doesn't have anything, but oh, he's just a little guy. He threw one punch too many. So I picked him up and we went belly to belly and both of us are off the ground at one point and slammed to the canvas. And no disrespect to Josh, but I felt his will leave at that point when I knew that I was in complete control of this fight. The very first thing that opened up was a huge body shot um, on his right side. So I reached back and I landed a hard body shot to the ribs. I knew when I got to mount, this was a bad idea for him. And I felt him move and he bridged up into his right side. And I catch him halfway through and I'm in mount and he's on his side so he has no defense. I was hitting this guy so hard with everything I had because he turned to my left, which is my strong hand. And I hit him 15 or 16 times. And on one of the end punches, I realized that he wasn't really conscious with us at that point. He was out. We fight four times in six months and win a championship. That's what I wanted, and that's what I did. The first thing I looked at is my kids, right there. I have four daughters. The whole reason why I take on huge tasks is because I want them to see that there's no obstacle, there's nothing that can get in the way. If you really, really, really want to do something, nothing can stop you. I'm 42 years old, I have no business in the MMA world whatsoever, I don't. If you look at the big picture, I have no business in it. But I wanted those girls to see that if you put your mind to it and you decide it's something you wanna do, and you do the work every day, and they saw that part of it too. Because I had focus, because I had determination, because I had four daughters that I didn't wanna let down, I worked my ass off through all of that so that they could see that if you do it, you put in the work, you put in the time, you dedicate yourself, no matter what it takes, you can accomplish anything. I wanted them to see it, the birth of a thought, all the way to them putting that belt around my waist. That, because now, A, I get to use that against them for the rest of their lives when they tell me something's too hard, <laughs> you know? And B, they hopefully will take that inspiration away from it and see that it doesn't, if they want to do it, they can really do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the obstacles are. It doesn't matter what people tell you. It doesn't matter what people think. If you're going to do it, just go. Period. And you can do it. Put your fists up. Put your fists up. Let me see you.
Sonic Press.